Hello everybody and welcome to In My Mug episode 231 on Monday the 15th of April 2013. I am still your host Stephen Layton and this week I have lots of news. So let's go to the news! So first thing I'm going to show it's a, it's, a, it's news about presents for me basically. Beer Bods, beerbods.co.uk. They do a subscription for beers and Matt who owns it uh, ping me, uh, well, send me a lovely, lovely handwritten letter where you can get 12 bottles, basically you get 12 bottles of beer every uh, in one go and then you taste them each week and you talk and share about them on, online and um, he sent me one for free. So thank you, Matt. That's really, really, really kind of you. Go and have a look at Beer Bods. It's very, very, very good. Um, two, um, oh yeah, oh, shit. The Grand National may be over, but sweepstake is still happening. The work for the video is underway. It's going to be awesome. Um, but basically, the pretense is you buy a bag. If your jockey, you have a different jockey on each bag. If your jockey wins, then you get a voucher back to spend on has been for the value of. So uh, go go take a look at that. Um, iPad issues are now fixed. iPad app. There were some problems when you turn the screen around, the buttons didn't work. Nigel has been working super hard to get that done and he's done it, so thank you Nigel, that is very cool. And I got sent some chocolates as well, made with jailbreak, which I think is very, very cool. They are so, so pretty. I don't know if you can see them on the camera there, but they are beautiful. Um, I am going to enjoy those later. Um, thank you very, very much to... De Rosier Chocolates, uh, who are based in South West London, and uh, they buy our coffee, and they've done this, and it was from Leona, so thank you, Leona, that is very, very kind. And I have this, look at this, how cool is that, right out of a sack and everything, and it's beautiful. Um, and this was made by uh, Sinana, Sinana, I, I'm sorry if I've got the pronunciation wrong, um, and sent me this beautiful, beautiful pillow, so thank you, this all should become part of the in my mug set um, and I'm very very grateful so thank you and that was the news so it's now time for 20 seconds on and this week it's going to be on the varietal Ikatu okay so we should do this and on the marks get set go so Ikatu is a coffee varietal that was first founded in 1985 in Brazil from the Agronico de Campinas, but was officially not released in 1993. Its origins come from the cultivars of Mundo Novo and Katura, which both have its feet in Bourbon, um, but also has a little bit of Canepheria, which is Robusta, and is by far the most complicated varietal I've ever seen. So yeah, what I'm saying about this being a complicated varietal, it's got some Robusta in there, it's got some Bourbon, it's got Mundo Novo, it, it's super, super complicated. Um, it uses the root system of the Robusta because the root system is far better, um, but it, it's resistant to leaf rust, it's, it's very resistant to lots of pests. Um, but also I've seen this cup turn up quite a lot in a uh, cup of excellence lots. So obviously it doesn't have a compromise on the final cup quality, which is of course the thing that we are most bothered about and we find very important. So um, it seems like a wonderful, wonderful varietal, but we'll find out some of its downfalls when we get into it. So uh, this week we're doing Brazil uh, Paseo uh, Ikutu. Now I know we've done Paseo and it's a natural. I know we've done Paseo already, and we've done a natural Paseo, but this one is really, really different. Um, and that's what In My Mug is about, is about we have this journey together tasting you know, wildly different coffees, uh, like uh, the Ethiopian Woat a couple of weeks ago, and then tasting something very closely related to each other. This is what gets me very, very excited. So if you've watched the one before this, you'll know that this comes from the Vieira family. Um, three generations of growers from the farm. Uh, Adolfo is the current uh, custodian of the farm, um, who is obsessed with detail. Like, to do all of these different varietals and, and, and all of this work, it, it's, it's, very, it's very unusual for a big, big Brazilian farmer like this to be doing this. And this is because he is very, very uh, keen to make sure that he does everything right. Uh, right through to the employees that he 
pays he pays them extra compared to the rest of the area to do specialised picking to only pick the right cherries. Um, he also uh, wants to look after the people who work on the farm by uh, provide schooling for the children, professional training for the people working on the farm. He's very very aware of the environmental issues and the environmental responsibilities he has on the farm. Um, about it being sustainable, uh, uh, so much so they've got a, a native forest set aside on the farm, which is a protected part of the farm, um, which they will never plant coffee on, uh, and, and they have uh, a tourist uh, a tourist centre there where you can go and kind of visit. Um, so if you're ever in Minas Gerais, pop in and see Adolfo, tell him Steve sent you. Um, but really, like it's every single detail of the farm is something that uh, Aldafi is very concerned about. Um, the beauty of having a big farm like Paseo, and it is a big farm, um, it means that you can do those things. You know, the, the economies of scale come that you can have a portion of land set aside for natural forest. Um, the farm has lots of different varietals on it. Uh, of course, this is it, Ikatu. Um, but there is also uh, the ruby, uh, there is Bourbon, there is Katora. Um, and yeah, you know, like he's really kind of concentrating on all of these uh, little details. I've already said the Ica 2 is a, it's a hybrid varietal, uh, came from Brazil in 1985, but didn't really come commercial until 1983. Um, uh, and has its... Munda Novu is something that we, if you've watched it in my mugs before, we'll, we've talked about it as a varietal that it's very hardy, very pest resistant. Katura is a very tall plant that has uh, a, a, an awful lot of the good things of Bourbon, but none of the bad things of, um, you know, kind of high yield, kind of. Um, and this is just a really complicated varietal. Uh, on the face, it looks perfect. So it's, it's high yielding, it's pest resistant, uh, resistant to most types of leaf rust, uh, has appeared in Cup of Excellence coffees uh, in the past on and Cup of Excellence Jews on blind cupping tables has been found to have a good cup quality. Just like this one kind of jumped out to us. Um, but, and it's a big but, it has to have the right set of circumstances to be tasted. So it seems from what I've found is that altitude of 1,000 to 1,200 metres above sea level seems to be the perfect place for it. And Brazil also seems to be the perfect place for it. it needs to be fairly sheltered and fairly low winds because of its height. Um, it needs low acidity soils um, and it needs a, a very dry season during the flowering stage. Luckily, Paseo seems to fit all of these criteria, so it can take advantage of this really nice coffee to work with. If you're a coffee grower, you want it to be high yielding, you want it to be pest resistant, you want it to be tasty, and it kind of, it all fits into what happens on Paseo. So the numbers are, it's a uh, farm is Brazil for Zenda Paseo, it's 100% Ikatu, it's a naturally processed coffee, uh, it's sun dried on patios, has an altitude of 1,100 to 1,200 metres above sea level, owned by Aldolfo Enrique Vieira Ferreira. I'll try and do that without yeah, spitting my teeth out. Uh, nearest city is Alfinas, it's in the region of Minas Gerais. And it is in Brazil, and that's pretty much it. So what we should do now is go to the map bit. And I love this map bit because I've already have it recorded from the other one. So it's the map bit. I did it last month. It's the map bit. It's the map bit. No expense spent. It's the map bit. Hello. So we zoom down as is the new way. And we zoom back out. And unusually, because we've been going to Africa and Asia a lot, we're going to go to um, South, South America. Oh, oh, come on, Steve, get your brain in gear. So South America. And uh, we're going to focus on the continent. So let's look at some stuff with our Sanasi transition. We can see Brazil there and Bolivia and Peru, but we're interested in the continent. So six growing countries, population of a lot, a surface area of a lot, lot more. Um, and when you compare that against the UK, it kind of gives you a real idea of just how vast a country it is. Um, so we're going to zoom down to Brazil. Um, and here we can see uh, Inglaterra, Cachoeira, Paseo. Um, but before we go down to those farms, we should look at the country statistics. So, uh, and more snazzy transitions. The country is called Brazil, or Brazil. The population... 
again, just humongous when you compare it to the UK. Four times the size population. Size, big, and the capital is Brasilia, which uh, everybody thinks it's Rio, um, but no, no, it's Brasilia, which is the uh, where the government is. Um, and we're going to look at Minas Gerais. Uh, Minas Gerais, lots of great coffee comes from this region, but it's all down in the bottom south, kind of southwest kind of part. So um, let's zoom down to there, and we'll zoom down to Paseo, and you can see a really good view of the farm here. A great aerial view of the the, the little the water source and, and, and all of the drying patios. Um, really good detail, which I'm very, very happy with. Um, to give you context of where they are compared to Cachoeira and Inglaterra, you can see that it's a little bit more in. Cachoeira is actually not in Minas Gerais. Um, uh, it's it's on the border of, um, and Pocas de Caldos is where Inglaterra is. So let's look at the farm pictures. Um, and here we've got uh, Aldolfo uh, looking very happy. And if you look at those ribs, that, uh, the way the plants are in that top right picture, um, what I want you to do is look at the ribs. And then when we go back to the map, you can actually see those ribs. Can you see them? So there we go. Zoom out so you see it a little bit more. Yeah. So uh, we're going to look at the farm details. So the name is Fazenda Paseo. The altitude is 1,100 to 1,200 metres above sea level. The varietal is this unusual uh, ruby varietal. And the, the nearest town is uh, Alfinas. Um, the ruby varietal is the mixture of Mundanovu and Katayi um, that we're, we're so proud to have. So that was the map bit. So don't you just love it when life is made that tiny, tiny bit easier? Uh, but a great map bit, really cool. Uh, very, very pleased with that one. Uh, now it is time for Roland's Daft Fact of the Week. Roland's Daft Fact of the Week. The drain patios of Paseo are over 4,000 square metres of concrete terraces. If you want that to sound small, it's one five millionth of the size of Wales or El Salvador. If you want it to be big, then it's over an acre. Roland's Daft Fact of the Week An acre of concrete. That is one heck of a lot of concrete. Right, so we should get onto the Wheel of Death. And uh, last week we had Latte. I was very lucky last week. I don't know whether I'll be so lucky this, so replacing it with Siphon and Wheel of Death. Where it goes, nobody knows and nobody cares. Americano, oh wonderful. Lovely, lovely Americano. I think I might need some chocolates to take the taste of that away if, uh, when I get to it. So, I'm gonna whack you on pause. I'm gonna get some tasty and delicious drinks. I'll be back with you in just a moment. Okay, so I'm back. If you're wondering where my cushion's gone, it's, it's making me sit forward now. I like it. It's definitely becoming a permanent part of the set here. It actually feels more comfortable too. Anyway, let's dive into the espresso. So on the smell, you really can smell like dark chocolate. And I know this coffee well, and I know I'm going to get buckets full of dark chocolate. Oh, and there it goes. Beautiful dark chocolate. Big, big mouthfeel. But still sweet. Like a little bit like um, white sugar. So like it's almost as if somebody's put some sugar in there, but the dark chocolate is immense. In fact, my chocolates. It's gonna go immense with one of these. Um, athletes will like chocolates every now and again, aren't they? Look at that. That is beautiful. All right. Oh, oh, it's white chocolate in the middle. Sorry, this isn't very entertaining, is it? Watching me eat chocolate and drinking. Oh, that pairs so well. I love a little piece of chocolate with my espresso. I think that is amazing. Oh, mm. I'm enjoying that. So let's go into the milk. Checking the phone for barista competition. Should stop doing that. Powerful coffee. I'm still tasting a lot of chocolate, I must admit, but powerful coffee, 
cutting through sweet milk. Like, the perfect balance. That is really tasty. That's like really, really tasty. I will finish that. And I haven't finished a milk drink for I don't know how long. It's just the body. Just comes running, running through. That dark chocolate again. So, Americano. Two thirds hot water, one third espresso. I'm going to stir it. They look revolting. All the crema just kind of congregates on the top and it just doesn't look very pretty at all. And I think that's part, the first reason why I don't like them. Um, tips on making them better is uh, add a little bit of cold water to the hot water you're adding so it makes it drinkable quicker. So we've done that with this just to make it so I can drink it a little bit quicker. Because when they sit around, they get a bit manky and they look a bit horrible. But um, and yeah, drink them, drink them fresh. Okay, well that's not too bad. Um, I was expecting a lot, lot worse, and I was expecting to lose a lot of the things that I've got in the brewed coffee. But actually, I haven't because it's just turned down the volume of the espresso. The dark chocolate is still there. The white sugar is there. But what it's turning to now. It's like a candy floss. So there's like a real sugary stickiness there. And this is the weirdest descriptor ever. I found it on the cupping table. I'm seeing it here. We were 50-50 in the cupping table, like of, of agreeing with me and disagreeing with me. But pink wafers. So those biscuits, the pink wafer biscuits, because it's got a little bit of a creaminess to it, but it's got a bit of biscuit to it, but it's not like you, it's more wafery. Um, and this is the best place you see the similarity of the other natural, the uh, ruby from the same farm. Is You can tell they're related. You can tell that they are brother and sister. You can tell that they have come from a similar place, just with a different kind of parentage of the varietal, if you like. Um, it's the most delicate natural processing I think I've ever seen. Like, it is so careful and delicate, it's just delicate. Delicate is definitely the word for it, I'm gonna have a piece of chocolate. It really is. It's a super, super coffee. I hope you don't mind me doing the same coffee three times, just in different ways, but I think it's been worth it. Mm. That chocolate is phenomenal. Okay, we'll, we should go into the pin board of doom. And this was sent in to me by uh, Gary, uh, Gary Dyke. Uh, this is awesome. Start him young Gary, get him on the coffee early. This is Chloe. Uh, his niece, uh, and she's in barista training, so a great photo, uh, made me smile a huge amount, so thank you Gary. Gary is um, a great, great friend of Has Been, and we, uh, yeah, I love that. Please, 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 more Pinboard of Dooms, I don't have a lot left. Okay, and now it is time for the staff clip. Look into my crystal ball. Who could it be for Staff Clip of the Week? It must be Chris. This is Vision of the Future. I think in the future there will be more barista courses, more cupping courses, and a course on how to get the best out of steaming milk. This is Vision of the Future. He could be right, you know. I think on the website now, before it wasn't, but now it is. There are new courses for a barista course, cupping course. So barista courses with Chris and Dale, uh, as is the milk course. So if you want to learn how to steam milk, uh, getting the best out of milk, um, not a course for me, I guess. Maybe I should do that one. And uh, the cupping course with me, Gary and Roland. Uh, get yourself signed up. Uh, the last ones were went in the blink of an eye, so you should definitely get yourself signed up early for them. And, uh, yep, yeah. okay, I'm done. Time to wrap up. Do remember, life is too short for bad coffee, and I'm not going to do the Gordon's a lot. <laughs>